right. So, uh, so last class uh, we were looking at uh, performance measures, right, and uh, then I started talking about uh, uh, setting up experiments uh, in order to say something about, uh, in order to measure performance uh, of algorithms and why you want to set up experiments, right, and, uh, and being an empirical uh, subject, how experiments are very important, right. And so the whole idea behind all of these experiments is that we really want to measure So, we want to measure performance on a population, right? I want to measure performance on a population, but all I get to do is right, I can all I get to do is test on a sample, right. So, whatever is the situation, right, whether we do cross validation or whether you do bootstrap or whether you just set aside a validation set, whatever it is, it is a sample that you are testing on. And what I am really interested in knowing is how will my algorithm perform on the entire population as a whole, right. So, I give you this p of x comma y, right. So, I want to know, oh well I do not give you the p of x comma y, that is the whole problem, right. So, there is this p of x comma y and I want to know how the performance will be with respect to that underlying sampling distribution and I do not have access to that uh, p x y and therefore, I will always be testing on a sample, right. But I am really interested in performance on a population, right. So, all what we are doing with the hypothesis testing here is essentially trying to say that how much can you infer about the performance on the population from the test results on a sample, right. So, how confident can you be that whatever you are getting as the test result on a sample is the performance on the population, right. So, that is essentially what we are trying to do here, right. So, in the in statistics terminology the test on a sample right gives you what is called a what is called a statistic right and the performance on a population is in some sense a it is a kind of a parameter that you want to uh, you want to what is the average prediction error right on the entire population. So, that is a parameter that you want to estimate and what you have is what is the prediction error on a sample okay that is a statistic okay. So, uh, the more uh, common distinction that people can make is average versus mean right. So, average is essentially a statistic right. So, the mean is a performance thing right it is actually over the entire distribution right and if you take samples and you take the average of the samples you use that as the mean of the distribution right. So, we just use it as it is, but that is not correct right. So, because when you take a sample average okay there is some probability that it will be close to the the true mean of the distribution right. So, the statistic will be the average and the parameter that you are estimate uh, trying in, you are interested in would be the mean okay. So, uh, So, what are the factors that will influence this? How confident you can be about the parameters from the statistics? Sample, Sample size is one, anything else? How? how? Of the population. Yeah, no, but I am going to take a lot, a lot of uh, samples. Yeah, some, somebody else said something else. No, no, no. Well, those are variance. Variance, variance, who said variance? Yeah. So, the variance of the underlying distribution right. So, how how variable is the underlying distribution? So, for that I will I mean I, I probably have to compensate for that I will need to take a larger sample and things like that. So, the variability also is an issue right. So, this is something under my control this is something that is not ok. So, these are things you should remember and uh, So, we talked about two things that we wanted to do, ok. 
okay. So, in the hypothesis testing, so what we are really interested in doing is actually answering some kind of yes or no questions, right. I have an hypothesis, okay. So, my learning algorithm is better than the other learning algorithm. So, algorithm 1 is better than algorithm 2, yes or no, okay, right. And I give you an answer, I say yes, okay. I also would like to know what is the probability that the answer was wrong. So, that is essentially what I am trying to do in, in hypothesis testing. So, I will ask you an yes or no question, right. So, the question usually is of the following form if people have already done some amount of hypothesis testing in uh, have you done some, some null hypothesis, alternate hypothesis, reject one in favor of the other, no? Yes. Ah, okay, yeah, the, 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 yeah, people who have done the course in DOMS would know this. Uh, but apart from that, nothing in strategical signal processing? No? Okay, fine. So, the basically the yes or no questions will be of this following form, right. So, I will have one basic assumption, right, which is both the algorithms are the same, right, and then I have an alternate assumption which will say that algorithm 1 is better than algorithm 2. So, the question I ask is should I accept the basic assumption or should I reject it? but not blindly reject it, should I reject it in favor of the alternate assumption that I have, right, are they equal or is 1 better than 2, right. I could, I could also post my alternate question in different way, I can say are they equal or are they not equal, okay. So, the, the confidence with which I can answer these two questions will be different for the same data, right. So, one, one case the question was are they equal or is 1 better than 2, so in the other case the question was are they equal or are they not equal. So, in the in both these cases the confidence with which I can answer this will be different for the same data that I have right. So, we will see why that is the case as we go along, but the questions will be of this form right. So, yes do I accept this or do I reject this okay and if I choose to uh, uh, accept this what is the probability that I was wrong okay. So, I do not want to accept uh, accept something if the probability is too low, I just basically say I am sorry I cannot say anything that is statistically sound about these two, two, two algorithms given the experiments that you have run, okay. You will give me some data I will just say I cannot say something statistically sound about this given whatever you have told me because the probability of me making errors is fairly large. So, how large is fairly large? Huh? Yeah, yeah, but uh, typically I do not want it to be even larger than 5 percent, okay. Usually, I, I want it to be even smaller 1 percent, right. Why is that the case? Because as you will see as we go along, we will be making a lot of approximate assumptions, approximation assumptions so that we can get things in a tractable form. So, given that we are making so many assumptions, we want at least the probability of error to be very small so that we can be assured of something good, right, something uh, reasonable, right. So, is that fine? So, we are, you ask a yes or no question and you look at the probability that is hypothesis testing. The second one is parameter estimation, right. So, here it is not enough for me to answer whether program 1 is better than program 2, right. I want to know what is the average performance of program 1, right. Let us say I am just looking at running times, okay. So, I have some program that is supposed to crunch a lot of numbers and give me some output and I want to look at the running time of this program, right. So, I want to find out what is the average mean running time or the expected running time of the program on any sample given from a population, right. But then I only have some 20 samples on which I have run this program, okay. I can take the average of the running time on these 20 samples, but I want to know what will be the running time on any sample I give you from the population, right. So, how like, how, right, how far away is this estimate on 20 samples from the true mean running time of this program. So, this is what we mean by parameter estimation, right here this, this is why I put the parameter in quotes up here, okay. They are slightly different uh, usage here, I mean they are really not at a very fundamental level they are not but at least they are very different from the way we have been using it so far, right. So, we have been talking about when you say parameters, we have been talking about uh, like weights in a network, 
or, or the alphas in the support vector machine and so on and so forth. But here when you talk about parameter I actually mean the performance parameters that we are interested in right. So the second thing which we want is essentially parameter estimation where I am looking at some kind of a interval right around my statistic right and I should tell you that okay with, with some amount of confidence right the true parameter lies in this interval around the statistics. So it is like saying that okay so I run this uh, all my uh, uh, tests on this uh, sample data and I get the performance as say 3.3 seconds okay then I will say it is 3.3 .3 plus or minus 0.5 seconds okay. So then the true mean will lie somewhere in that interval right with a high probability right. So you can see that the two questions are related so the first question again says how can I reject can I say one is better than two right the second one I am saying no no I want to know what exactly is the performance of one and in both cases I am looking at some kind of a confidence score of comparing these two okay. does it make sense great is there a question oh yeah uh, I can repeat confidence score but I will tell you more about it <laughs> later okay that is what the, the, the rest of the lecture is going to be telling you about how to get this confidence measure right. So I will uh, repeat something which I gave as an example in the last class right. So let us say you have two algorithms right I am going to call them new and old okay. So I have two algorithms okay so two algorithms new and old okay. So the old one is running for a while okay the old one I have used the old one for a while and I know I have run it for a long time right and I have some measure of how good the old one's performance is going to be right. So I know the mean performance of the old algorithm because I have been running it for a long time right and I, I also know the kind of the standard deviation of the performance because I have generated a lot and lot of samples let us assume that right and uh, the example I think I gave in the last class was on intrusion detection right I said there is some, some uh, algorithm that has been running for a while right and then uh, it gives you some performance it catches say 84 percent of all the intrusions right and then I propose a new algorithm which runs for like 10 days and it catches 87 percent of all the intrusions so it is a new one better than the old one right is it, is it, is it clear so the question so the old one has a okay do I have numbers here whatever so I, I do not have a fully worked out thing the old one has some 84 percent performance the new one has 89 so it is a new one better than the old right uh, does not matter this I mean these numbers do not really matter okay do not do not get hung up on these just just for illustration purposes. So I am going to pose it a little more formally now right so by Right, so this is as we had 84 and 89 I am going to call these as mu new and mu old right so I am sorry I should be very careful okay and I do not know mu new okay I only mu mu old I have somehow estimated it to be 84 because I have a lot of experience with the old thing and mu new I do not know what I do know is a statistic right. So I'll, what I new know is do know is some x bar of new which is 89 I have a statistic which I run it on some 10 samples and I know that the performance is 89 right. So now what I do is I formulate a hypothesis right. So what is the base hypothesis I am going to formulate Seriously, I mean, all of you have done some probability and statistics course, right? right? 
Did you guys do all of this? In the, in the maths department, this is done in the second uh, statistics course. Oh, not in the PRP, is it? Not in the first one. Okay, I guess it's not a statistics course. Okay, it's probability and random process. There is no statistics in it. Okay, fine. Fine. Yeah. Because I, I did it in my very first math course in undergrad. And I am not a, I was not a CS student, so. Right. So, you formulate a null hypothesis. I am going to say mu old is equal to mu new. Okay. Then I am going to formulate an alternate hypothesis. So, I get a statistics, okay. I get one measurement of nu, right, uh, of this, right. So, x bar nu. So, here is this question is a sample of size n, right. So, that is a uh, that is important thing that you have to note here, right. So, next thing I want to really figure out is suppose my null hypothesis is true. Suppose my null hypothesis is true, okay. what is the probability that I would have got a performance of x bar nu on a sample of size n. Sorry, sorry I, I did not hear you, is mu old is less than mu nu, I am sorry. Mu old is exactly equal to mu nu. That is essentially there is no difference in the two algorithms. Greater than mu nu. Then you are doomed. Yeah. <laughs> you, are you are proposing a new algorithm, right? At least you are assuming it is not better. That is a, that's a very uh, subtle point here, right? So, the question I really want to ask is is mu nu better than mu old, right? So, if if mu nu was lesser than mu old, Right. Remember what is the question I am asking? Can I accept the null hypothesis, right, or can I reject it in favor of the alternate hypothesis? So that is the question I ask, right? So if mu nu is actually less than mu old, as we will see when we go along, then we will say that no, I can't, I can't reject it, right, in favor of the alternate hypothesis. Basically, it. then you have to go back. Your test basically falls apart. Your basic assumption was wrong. Then you have to go back and rerun the test, right? So a safer question to ask is: Is mu old not equal to mu new? But that's not of interest to you, right? You really want to establish whether new is better than old or new is worse than old. You don't want to know new is different from old. That's not an interesting question for you, right? So if you remember yesterday, I was I mean last class I was telling you about you need to be very clear on what is the question you are asking in the experiment. Right. So, running an experiment, you need to be very clear on what is it that you are looking for in the experiment. Right. So, for example, so I, I am going to point you guys to a, a really uh, fantastic book on empirical methods in AI, right. explaining all of these things to you, which will uh, usually in a statistics book is in a very dry uh, statistical sense, right? I mean, very, very mathematical sense. They actually take real experiments that they ran on uh, different kinds of machine learning and uh, AI settings, right, and then talk about. Uh, introduce these topics very slowly to you, right? Uh, in fact, I think I already did one chapter from this book last class, and uh, today we are going to do another chapter from the book. Uh, so I'll just want you to read. It. I'm not going to do the full book. Don't worry. But I did a course during my PhD. I did a course, entire course based on that book. So th this is the person who, who I told you does not, I mean, believes very strongly in ceiling effects, and the course itself was on empirical methods. 
right? Uh, and uh, so he has this dialogue, nice dialogue that he has in the uh, in the book, right? So there are two people uh, uh, talking, and then one guy says, "Hey, what are you trying to do?" I, he said, "Then the uh, researcher two replies, i 'I'm trying to run this experiment. I want to figure out if algorithm one is faster than algorithm two. Okay." Then he says, how will you do this? Or if algorithm 1 is better than algorithm 2, then he will say, how will you do this? Then he says, starts describing, I am going to set up this experiment so that I will on this data set, I will run this algorithm 10 times, on this data set, I will run this algorithm and then I will make this measurements. So then he asks, why are you finding, why are you doing this experiment? Okay, and then guy again replies, oh, I am trying to do this to figure out if algorithm 1 is faster than or algorithm 1 is better than algorithm 2. Okay. Uh, but then, then, there is, then he has another conversation between two people and they are asking, hey, what are you doing? He says, oh, I have this new method, I heard this new method for uh, estimating uh, some uh, uh, significance of some uh, uh, biological markers. I am trying to figure out whether this is better than that. Then he says, okay, how are you going to do this? And then he goes about describing the experiment setup. Then he says, why are you doing this? And then he says, oh, I heard that this particular method uses technique X for doing this and therefore that is supposed to be better. So I am trying to figure out whether that assumption that on which this algorithm is based on, right, is that valid or not, right. So there is a very subtle difference between the two conversations, right. The first one essentially that guy wants to know it is faster or not, right, does not doesn't really have any deeper scientific questions that he is asking, right. So in the second case, this person actually has some other valid scientific question that they are asking and they are using experimentation as a way of answering the scientific question. Right? And that is the really the reason you should do scientific, uh, you should do these experiments, not just for making measurements for measurement's sake. Okay, so it's not directly related to your question, but I'm just using that as an excuse to talk about this story. So, so, so you should be very careful about why you are setting up these experiments and what your alternate hypothesis is, and depending on how you set it up, then you have to interpret the results you are getting. Okay. Let us move on to point 3, okay. assuming that your null hypothesis is true, right? how likely is it that you would have seen this performance, this statistics x nu, x bar nu. So assume null hypothesis is true and then you try to figure out how will the mean performance be distributed. So if I run the algorithm, so the new or old because I am assuming the null hypothesis is true, so new or old should give me the same performance. If I run this on sample of size n. Okay. So I, I take sample 1 of size n, I run it, I take sample 2 of size n, I run the algorithm, I take a sample 3 of size n and I run it and so on and so forth and for each of this I am going to get some average performance, right. So how will those averages be distributed, right. For every sample I draw, I am going to get a different performance and how will that performance be distributed, right. So that is the question that I want to ask. So I essentially say I have to set up this distribution and that is called the. It's called the sampling distribution. Okay, so what is the sampling distribution again? Hmm? I heard some voice from somewhere. I can't locate who. What is the sampling distribution? 
it is the distribution of the mean performance on samples of data okay of the whatever algorithm you are talking about. So, it is a distribution of the mean of the performance on samples of data of a particular size. If I change n, the sampling distribution could also change right. I am looking at the distribution right. So, know that the means by themselves do not mean much okay. So, then you use the sampling distribution to calculate the probability of obtaining x nu. So, once I have this distribution, I can figure out what is the probability of seeing x bar nu under this distribution, right. So, there are a couple of things that we have to decide on here. The first thing is the most tricky part in all of hypothesis testing is how to come up with the sampling distribution, right. How do you come up with the sampling distribution? That is the tricky part, 